these old eyes of mine. They must be playing tricks. Are, are you Adam Graham? The very same. And this is my old time radio snack wagon. Welcome to the Old Time Radio Snack Wagon, where we serve up a bite-sized portion of old-time radio. And now, here's your Snack Wagon host, Adam Graham. This week, we're serving up an episode of a series that many people enjoyed and that I've been meaning to serve again. But other plans have gotten in the way. But now we're going to bring you another episode of Family Doctor. From 1937, here is Episode 3, Error in Diagnosis. Hello there. This is the Family Doctor. Yes, sir. Anything I can do for you? Well, no, I don't rightly know. I reckon it's all that'll be up to you. <laughs> well, I guess you're right, Griff. Well, come on up. Uh, ain't as young as it used to be. Stairs kind of took me out. Well, I guess there isn't any hurry. We can take them slower. Uh, How's business at the boathouse, Griff? Oh, tolerable for this time of season, I reckon, but... Uh... Reckon as hell this is going to be the last. Yep, the last. What? Oh, no. Gosh, to Friday, Griff, you've got a long time to live yet. Yep, I guess you're right, Doc. That's just the trouble. What do you mean? Oh, there ain't uh, nothing nobody can do about it. Just have to let it go, I guess. Yep. Mm. Oh, here's Lawyer Bates coming down the stairs. Howdy, Ralph. Yeah, howdy. Oh, no. What do you suppose is fretting Ralph Bates? Uh, what's he? I said, don't you know Lawyer Bates? Oh, yes, yep, I know him all right. But you didn't speak to each other. Yeah, that's right, nope. We didn't speak to each other, nope. Hmm. Yeah, step right in, Griff. Thank you. Uh, can you sit right down, Doc? Kind of tuckered. Sure, it's right in that big chair. <sighs> Feels good. Now, what seems to be the trouble? Well, I'll tell you. For about a week now, I've been getting dizzy spells, sort of. Seeing the black spots in front of my eyes. Kind of worries me. Hmm. Take off your coat, Griff. Yeah. Open up your shirt. Going to cut me open? <laughs> No, no. I'm just going to do a little sounding. Uh, uh, Griff, have you been doing any hard work on those boats of yours? Well, no, not to speak of. Got to keep them in shape, of course, but uh, I've been getting the Maynard twins to do the most of it. Pay them uh, 25 cents an hour after school. I see. Uh, <coughs> what's that for, Doc? All that thumping around in my chest. Oh, just trying out a theory. Now, Griff, when I place this stethoscope to your chest, you just sit there in a natural like and breathe. That's it. Uh-huh. Mm. What is it, Doc? My, uh, my heart. Yes, Griff. It's your heart. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yep, that's what I thought. How old are you, Griff? How old? Well, let me see. Well, I was too old to join up with T.R. and the Rough Riders in 98. Well... Reckon I'm past 70. That's about all I can recollect. Now, you tell me the truth, young man. 
Haven't you been doing some extraordinary hard manual labor lately? No, 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 Doctor. I swear I ain't. The Maynard twins have been doing it all. Then uh, you got something on your mind. Well, uh... What's fretting you? Oh, oh Doctor can't stand it. Well, tell me about it. You know, a doctor has to keep lots of secrets. Yeah, I guess that's right. Well, uh, it's this way. My daddy had that there boathouse up to Miller's Lake afore me, and his daddy afore him, Granddaddy Lice Miller, he discovered it. We Millers sort of took it for granted, I guess, that it, well, that it belonged to us. Yep, belonged to us. Well, doesn't it? Well, this is Saturday afternoon. It uh, belongs to us Millers. Maybe in the last belongs to us up till Monday morning. And what's going to happen then? Doc, Dr. Adams, I, I don't like to complain, none, but, well, truth is, I wrapped myself in for a mortgage on the place three years ago just in order to get some new canoes and some of the newfangled outboard motors, as they call them. Yep, there's a mortgage on the place. And is the mortgage due now? No, 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 but, uh, not that. The principal ain't due for another seven years, but, of course, there's always the interest to pay. Uh -huh. Well, I told you how business has been pretty good this season, but it ain't, Doc. Doc, it, it ain't at all. It's been, well, as the young folks say, it's been lousy. Hmm. And you can't meet your interest payment right now, is that it? <laughs> yep, that's it. Well, who holds the mortgage on your property up there to the lake? Oh, well, uh, I don't think that makes no difference, Nope, It don't make... Griff? Uh, uh, yep, Doc? Who holds that mortgage? Uh, well, uh, Lawyer Bates. That's what I thought. How's that? Never mind. Hey, Griff, I'm going to give you some pellets to take. I want you to take these just as you get up in the morning, uh, and then just before you go to bed at night. Just as you say, Doc. Uh, two each time, twice a day. Uh, and don't you forget them. No, no, they won't. Reckon so they'll help her, might, Doc? Yes, they will. But they won't do it all. Griff, you've got to stop worrying uh, about the boats or the canoes or outboard motors or the mortgage. You understand? Well, yep, Doc, I understand. I, I know what you're getting at, but... Uh, I said not to worry, Griff. I'm your doctor. You let me worry about everything. Well, thank you, Doc. It's mighty kind of you. Well, uh, uh, I reckon uh, might as well be getting back to the lake. Well, thank you, Doc. I'll, uh, I'll pay you later for these here pills. Yep, uh, I'll pay you later. Well, don't you worry about it, Jeff. Just you take them and let me worry about the paying. And uh, drop in again, say, Monday morning. Well, thank you again, Doc. Well, good night. Yeah, good night, Jeff. Well, bait. You old skin flint. Gosh. Up Friday. And so help me, I don't think there's a thing I can do. Well, Ralph Bates, what in the name of good and bad happened to you? How should I know? That's what I called you for, to find out. Where have you been? Called you an hour ago. Oh, well, you know what it is around the house Monday morning? No, I don't know. Mm hmm. Well, let me take a look at you. Mm -hmm. How do you feel? Rotten. That's what I thought. What? Let me see your tongue. Uh, hey, what's my tongue got to do with it? Let me feel your pulse. Pulse? Well, all right. Uh, just as I thought. What is it, Doctor? What is it? Varicella. What? Oh, good heavens, what's that? It sounds terrible. It is. It's chicken pox. Chicken pox? What did you say? Impossible. Chicken pox at my age. Impossible. Oh, no, it isn't impossible. It happens quite often. Sometimes it's quite dangerous, too, in men of your age, I mean. Dangerous? Oh, no, no, it can't be. Well, that's what it is. I'm certain of it. Chicken pox. And that means I'll have to place you in quarantine. Oh, yes, yes, of course. But uh, What? Quarantine? You can't do that. No, 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 I've got no, business to do. Yeah. This is Monday morning. Yeah. I've got a very important business transaction to take care yeah. of today. You can't put me in quarantine. No, no, Ralph. You mustn't uh, carry on so. Uh, it's bad for your heart with oh, chicken pox. Yeah. Well, I'll give Pete May a prescription for you, and he can send it up with Johnny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, is this business transaction of yours anything I can take care of for you? Uh, of course not. No small-town doctor has enough brains to take care of anything. I just lose it, that's all. Well, maybe he won't be able to raise it today. Let's hope so anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's of course. Well, I'll drop around again this evening, Ralph. I'll see you then. Chicken pox at my age. It's preposterous. That's what it is. Preposterous, I say. I uh, Let me see. Where will I put this sign? Right here, I guess. Uh, there we 
are. Nice and yellow. <laughs> Quarantined. <laughs> feeling over the weekend. You look a lot better. Well, I feel better, Doc. Well, that's good. Uh, you haven't raised the interest on the mortgage yet, have you? No, no, I ain't. I thought while I was up here, I'd drop in on Lawyer Bates and tell him he might as well uh, take the place over. Uh, Lawyer Bates won't be in his office today, Griff. Oh, he won't? No, no, he won't be down. Uh, how much was that interest payment, Griff? $73.47. Mm-hmm, I see. Yeah, just a minute. <laughs> there you are, Griff. Uh, what's this, Doc? A prescription? Why, oh, well, well, no. It's a check. A check for $75. I'm taking a lien on your new canoes and motors, Griff. Oh. Uh, take that check down to the bank right away. Get Judge Windsor to apply it against Ralph Bates' interest claim. Oh. And then go on back to the lake and take a rest. Oh, I can't do this, Doc. I, I can't. Now, listen, young man. Didn't I tell you last Saturday to let your doctor do a little worrying for you? Oh, Doc. How can I thank you? Say, uh, by the way, Griff, haven't you got a lot of poison oak up there around Miller's Lake? Poison oak? <laughs> Law, me, doctors, there's tons of it. Wish I could get rid of it. Get rid of it? Oh, you'd better not, Griff. It may come in handy again sometime. house all day without anybody to take care of me with that plaguey yellow sign out there on my front stoop. How oh, now, Ralph? I told you to keep yourself calm. Uh, let me take a look at you. Hmm. There seems to be a little change. Change? Mm-hmm. It doesn't look like chicken pox this evening. What? What do you mean? What is it? It looks like poison oak. Poison oak. And you let me stay here. Uh, let me out of here. I've got to find Sam Windsor. I've got to foreclose that mortgage. Mortgage? Oh, uh, say, that reminds me. I saw Griff Miller this afternoon, just after the bank closed. Griff Miller? Yeah. Told me he just paid the interest on his mortgage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He felt pretty spry about it, too. Then, then it's too late. Mm. Say, uh, by the way, speaking of your poison oak, Ralph, they tell me there's a lot of it up around Miller's Lake. You don't suppose that's where you caught yours, do you? Sort of surveying around and like Grant Adams, you old fox. Hmm? You did that to me a purpose. Why, what do you mean, Ralph? You made me think I had that plaguey chicken pox just to give Griff Miller time to pay off that interest. You knew all the time I didn't have chicken pox. Oh, Ralph, don't you realize you're scandalizing my professional ethics? Professional ethics. You're a doctor, Grant, and as such, you're bound to treat human ills. I guess you just can't help treating some of the mental ills of us humans along with the physical ones. Oh, now. I know I'm right. I can see it in your eyes. Grant Adams, God bless you for it.
is the family doctor. I'll be in to see you again right soon. Goodbye. Welcome back. It might seem a little odd for Griff not to know when he was born or be able to guess his exact age. However, he was around 70, and that would put his birth date sometime in the 1860s. And depending on where he was born, particularly if it was a rural area or his family immigrated from another country, uh, an exact uh, birth date might not be known or birth certificate might not even have been issued. Doc Adams used a bit of trickery to achieve a just result. Today he would probably get sued for that, but this gives us an insight into the cultural image of the country doctor. The idea was that the country doctor represented not just a medical service provider, but a community elder who cared for the whole community. Uh, and a Doc Adams is talked about as the main doctor in town, and he'd have relationships with people of all classes and distinctions. Of course, even if he was sneaky, it's hard to fault him much. Lawyer Bates even admitted he'd stopped him from doing the wrong thing. The amount of interest that Griff owed amounts to less than $2,000 in today's money. Taking the livelihood and family business of an elderly man with no other means of support during the midst of hard economic times would have been a sure sign of extreme greed, a disease Doc Adams was happy to treat. It's time for me to close up the old snack wagon, but don't worry, we'll be back with another serving of old-time radio goodness before you know it. If you want to enjoy some of our longer-form podcasts, you can feast away at my website at greatdetectives.net. Your emails are also welcome at adam at snackwagon.net. The Old Time Radio Snack Wagon comes to you from Boise, Idaho. Your host is Adam Graham. Sound production is by Rhines Media, LLC. You can listen to past episodes of the Old Time Radio Snack Wagon as well as connect on social media at our website at snackwagon.net. Email suggestions for episodes to adam at snackwagon.net. This has been the Old Time Radio Snack Wagon. Until next time, goodbye.